Welcome to Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rome. And I'm Rebecca Rand. In our top story, the international community is anticipating U.S. President Donald Trump's decision on the Iranian nuclear accord. The majority of the House of Representatives Democratic Caucus has apparently ignored Tehran's repeated provocations and threats to destroy Israel and the United States. The lawmakers signed a letter urging the president to recertify the sweetheart nuke deal, which Israel believes could pave the way for the rogue Islamic regime to obtain nuclear weapons. Iran, you'll remember, wasted no time in stepping up its ballistic missile program and test firing dozens of rockets in 2015 after signing the original nuclear agreement brokered by the Obama administration. A senior member of the Al-Quds force boasted that Iran could annihilate the Zionist regime in less than eight minutes. Israel has always taken Iran's threat seriously and has urged world powers to be diligent in preventing the Ayatollahs from going atomic. Reports indicate the Trump administration is taking the advice of Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and will decertify the deal in order to strengthen the conditions of the agreement. The White House is also considering a series of harsh sanctions against the hardline Islamic Republic, including the designation of the Iranian Revolutionary Guards as a terrorist organization. The main two warring Palestinian factions are making another attempt to reconcile. Fatah leaders went to Gaza last week for the first time since 2014, after Hamas claims it dissolved its government and invited Fatah to take over the humanitarian crisis it created in the coastal enclave. In 2007, Fatah was ousted from the Gaza Strip in a bloody coup, which cost the lives of hundreds of Palestinians. In the wake of this announcement, rocket fire resumed from Gaza into southern Israel, and Hamas announced that they have appointed a notorious terrorist to be second in command. Saleh al orari spent the last several years establishing Hamas's terror network in Judea and Samaria. He is believed to have orchestrated some of the most heinous terrorist attacks, including the kidnapping and murder of three Israeli teenagers, which sparked the summer war between Israel and Hamas in 2014. During that conflict, the terror group rained thousands of rockets on Israel. President Trump went on the record for the first time since signing the waiver to postpone moving the U.S. Embassy from Tel Aviv to Jerusalem to explain why he chose to delay keeping his campaign promise. Trump stressed that he is waiting to give his administration's peace plan a chance to succeed. Now, many Israeli politicians expressed disappointment in the postponement and voiced their pessimism at being able to make a peace deal with the current Palestinian leadership, which incites its people to violence and terror. Israel's Deputy Foreign Minister Tsipi Hotaveli explained that Israel cannot reach an accord with a Palestinian government that is merging with the Hamas terror group, which has vowed to destroy the Jewish state. She said if Washington really wants to give peace a chance, it should move the embassy to Jerusalem in order to help make sure the holy city will never be divided again. She also emphasized the embassy transfer would go a long way toward facilitating peaceful coexistence between Jews and Arabs. More than 70 years after Anne Frank was arrested, a former FBI officer has reopened the investigation into the circumstances which led to her discovery by the Nazis. Despite successfully hiding in a building in Amsterdam, Anne Frank and her family were found and sent to a concentration camp where the young Jewish girl and her sister died. Many historians believe that the Nazis were tipped off and that the family was betrayed. Retired agent Victor Pancoke recently announced that his 20-member team will utilize modern technology to compile and cross-reference witness statements, lists of Nazi collaborators, historic documents, and prior research that could provide investigators with new leads. Pancoke said that there is a wealth of information that has never been examined, so his team plans to pour over every piece of data that they can find and reevaluate it. The investigation is being funded by a crowdsourcing campaign, and the team has appealed to the public to assist their, their efforts with information and financial support. The Palestinian Authority has begun a major crackdown on free speech. In July, PA President Mahmoud Abbas gave his government the power to jail anyone suspected of harming national unity or the social fabric. Civil rights activists insist this policy is preparing the way for the PA boss to further restrict freedom of expression, and the people seem to agree. A recent poll conducted by the Palestinian Center for Policy and Survey Research reflects that 80% of the Arabs fear the loss of liberties under the Palestinian Authority. 
The authors of the poll explain that this prevailing perception seems to be driven by a recent increase in incidents in which journalists and activists have been arrested by PA police. This development is especially troubling to Israelis as reports of Arabs who desire peace with the Jews are labeled as collaborators with Israel and are being jailed and tortured by Palestinian authorities. Jerusalem Mayor Nir Barkat personally sent his condolences to the mayor of Las Vegas after the shooting attack which paralyzed the city, traumatized America, and shocked the entire world. Mayor Carolyn Goodman vowed not to allow Vegas to be defined by this heinous act, but instead she said it will be known as a city of strength and resilience. Speaking to an Israeli reporter, Goodman said that Israel has been dealing with security threats every single day since 1948 and that her city will likely turn to the Jewish state for guidance in moving forward after the tragedy. It's been an exciting time for Israel with its athletes competing in the international arena. Last week, Israeli Paralympic rower Moran Samuel won the silver medal at the World Rowing Championship in Florida. Moran was a member of Israel's national basketball team until she suffered a rare spinal stroke in 2006. The tough competitor did not let her confinement to a wheelchair stop her. She began rowing in 2010 and has taken the Paralympics by storm. Two years ago, Moran won a gold medal at the World Cup in Italy, and in her last race, she set an Israeli record by completing the 2,000-meter course in 11 minutes and 20 seconds. Elsewhere in sports, three Israelis won gold medals at the Tashkent Grand Prix judo competition last week, and Israeli gymnast Artem Dolgapyat won a silver medal at the World Gymnastics Championships. The High Holy Days concluded with the celebration of Simchat Torah, which literally means rejoicing with the five books of Moses. This holiday marks the end of the annual cycle of weekly Bible readings and the beginning of the new one. Simcha Torah falls at the end of Sukkot and is marked by singing, dancing, and praising God for the Bible. Jews read the final passages of Deuteronomy during Simcha Torah and then roll the scrolls back and immediately read the first passages of Genesis. This act is meant to signify the eternal nature of the Torah. We at Israel Now News want to wish all of our viewers a Chag Sameach. Happy Simcha Torah. That concludes the news portion of our show. Stay tuned for Ask the Source with Josh Reinstein. Hello and welcome to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein, and we're here on a beautiful sunny day on our rooftop studio in Jerusalem. My guest today is Simon Plasker. He's the managing editor at Honest Reporting. Simon, thank you for being on the show. Thank you very much for having me. Tell us a little about what is Honest Reporting. Well, Honest Reporting is the world's largest grassroots organization dealing with anti-Israel media bias. And we have around 150,000 subscribers all around the world. And we give them the information to be able to respond to issues in the media where Israel is being treated unfairly. So give us some examples, Simon, of the activities that you perform when it comes to keeping the media honest on what they're reporting in Israel. Well, every day, we go through all of the English language media from around the world. We also have affiliates looking at Portuguese from Brazil, France, and we basically analyze what's being written about Israel. Where we see errors, we get them corrected. Where we see bias, we take action. We give people the tools to be able to respond. So we send out emails, email alerts to our subscribers, and we bombard the media with letters to the editor, complaints, and we get results. Well, give us an example of some of the most egregious uh, just lies that are spread about Israel in the media. Well, some of the, some of the stories that we've seen are actually completely false, um, what could be called fake news. Just recently, for example, we saw something in the International Business Times where there was a story that the, there was an increase in raids on the Temple Mount by Jews of 200% from the year before. And it turned out that the International Business Times had taken a story straight from Hezbollah's Almanar uh, media outlet where they had classified tourists, Jewish students, and anyone else visiting the Temple Mount other than Muslims as being, ra as being raiders of the Al-Aqsa Mosque. And we, of course, pointed this out to the media outlet and the entire story was removed. I mean, that's just a very extreme example of what we see. But obviously we see uh, smaller errors than that. Um, 
the Temple Mount, which we've already mentioned, is Judaism's holiest site, yet many in the media have been calling it other things, um, referring it to the Al-Aqsa Mosque compound and stating that the Western Wall is actually Judaism's holiest site, which is technically incorrect. And of course this is important, especially when there are arguments over the Jewish and of course the Christian connection to the Temple Mount as well. And we make sure to get these errors corrected. Simon, we know about fake news long before the Trump era, uh, but he's taken a magnifying glass and calling them out of just making up stories in the media. How has that helped the work that you're doing by people understanding that there is fake news now? Well, I think it's definitely helped. We see a lot of people are now looking at the media with different eyes. They're being a little bit more skeptical about what they're seeing. And of course, it's not just not just news about Israel, it's more than that, it's the news media in general. And we are making great efforts to educate the public about being good news consumers as well, being educated so that they know what they're looking at is not necessarily the full story, the full picture. Well, one of the biggest questions that we get asked is, Israel's the only free democracy in the Middle East, it's the only place that protects freedom of the media, for example, yet the media seems to be singling us out instead of the dictatorships around us. Why is there such a bias in the media against the state of Israel? Well, we don't have enough time, I think, to get into all of that, but uh, you mentioned about why there's a bias and a, a focus on this country as opposed to our neighbours. Well, for a lot of the journalists here, it's all about access. If they write something bad about Syria, Lebanon, Iran, Iraq, then they may get kicked out of that country. And what good is a Middle East bureau chief if you cannot report from the rest of the Middle East other than the one free democratic country in the region? So a lot of journalists are very, very careful about what they say about other countries. But of course, in Israel, we have a dynamic free press. And the domestic press here, as well as the international press, are very, very critical of Israel. And, you know, sometimes that's warranted, but other times we have a disproportionate amount of focus on what's going on here. Honest reporting is well known here. People follow it. People know what's going on. What's the next in the future of honest reporting? Are you going to start branching out into different languages, into different reporting, taking it to different governments? What's the future of honest reporting? Well, hopefully we're going to get bigger and better. Uh, as I've already mentioned, we are branching out into different languages. Maybe, for example, Spanish is something that's very important in the future. There are obviously big Hispanic communities in the United States that are getting the wrong information about this country. Um, of course, we're also on social media, Facebook, Twitter, and we want to be there 24-6. I say 24-6 because we don't work on the Jewish, Jewish Shabbat, but we are there the rest of the time, and we want to improve the, the amount of news outlets we're looking at and getting more and more corrections. Uh, Simon, there are literally tens of millions of people watching this show. What message do you have for our viewing audience? You can actually make a difference. One person alone may not be able to do that, but together thousands can. And I would urge you, please sign up to Honest Reporting at our website. It's uh, down here and it's free and you'll start receiving our information and you'll be able to take action on behalf of Israel and of course for good, decent reporting. Thank you, Simon, for being on the show. And thank you for tuning in to Ask the Source. I'm your host, Josh Reinstein. Now back to the studio. Up next, the return to Zion with Karen Hayasod. Shalom and welcome to the Return to Zion with Karen Ayesod. I'm Eliezer Moody Sandberg, World Chairman of Karen Ayesod, United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Today, you will witness the fulfillment of biblical prophecy through the gathering of the exiles. God bless you from Jerusalem. Those who dreamed about the Jewish state those who survived the Holocaust and found in Israel the anchor, the security. Those who wrought the historical miracle and against all odds established a state. Those who stepped into the breach 
and defended the young Jewish state. So many of them paid with their lives. Those who arrived in the homeland to their new home. Those who propelled Israel forward, step after step. Those who stand at the technological vanguard and the loyal partners who ensure the continuation of the Zionist enterprise. All those are Karen Hayesod, because Karen Hayesod is Eretz Israel. The return of an ancient people to their biblical homeland, a nation whose values inspired mankind only to endure centuries of suffering. The ultimate tale of redemption from the ashes of destruction. This remarkable story is the story of the State of Israel. It is also the story of Karen Hayesod. Thanks to the dedication of Karen Hayesod supporters, huge resources were available to make the State of Israel a reality. Founded in 1920, Karen Hayesod galvanized Jewish donors across the world in a unified effort to develop the infrastructure of the first sovereign Jewish state in 2,000 years. By the time the State of Israel was born in 1948, Karen Hayesod's funds had been the driving force behind the establishment of over 900 communities in the Jewish homeland. Its donors helped found many of the iconic institutions we know today, including the Hebrew University and Israel's Philharmonic Orchestra, ensuring that as Zachariah envisioned, Jerusalem's streets would once more be filled with boys and girls at play. Karen Hayesod's supporters also helped rescue tens of thousands of desperate Jews fleeing a burning Europe, bringing them to the sanctuary of the land of Israel. Ezekiel's prophecy of bringing dry bones to life had been fulfilled. Throughout the decades, Karen Hayesod has been there for Jewish people coming home. In the 1950s, by financing the creation of still vibrant cities, Elat and Sterot, bringing to life Ben-Gurion's vision of making the Negev desert bloom. In the 1960s and 70s, raising funds and providing a lifeline for the country's development during wartime and at the close of the century, helping to bring immigrants from the four corners of the earth in a modern-day exodus, rescuing tens of thousands of Jews from Ethiopia and one million Jews from the former Soviet Union, delivering them from danger and distress. To this day, Karen Hayesod's activists continue their mission of Aliyah and absorption. Last year, more than 31,000 Jews were helped to make their lives in the land of their ancestors. Karen Hayesod remains at the heart of Israel's development, as Israel's barren land has been transformed into a hub of creativity, innovation, and success. Karen Hayesod's supporters have been there every step of the way. They have empowered 2,000 pioneering young Israelis to reinvigorate 65 distressed communities. All of this has been achieved through Karen Hayesod's ongoing efforts to build unbreakable bonds with Israel among Jews in the diaspora, Christians, and people of faith from across the world. In the book of Jeremiah, the Lord says, There is a hope for your future. Your children will return to their borders. Every day, Karen Hayesod supporters are making this vision a reality. Thanks to Karen Hayesod, the state of Israel continues to grow from strength to strength. Come join Karen Hayesod in fulfilling biblical prophecy. Let's bless Israel together. To donate and get information, call us at 1-800-505-1665 or visit our website at www.khisrael.org. North Korea's nuclear program and North Korea's flagrant violation of its nuclear agreement with the West is of paramount importance to the state of Israel. And not only because North Korea is a hostile country to Israel and that Israel soon could come within range of North Korea's intercontinental ballistic missiles which are capable of carrying nuclear warheads. The North Korean nuclear issue is important for Israel because of Iran. Iran is indirectly at very least an ally of North Korea. 
the North Koreans built Syria's a nuclear reactor, uh, which was destroyed in 2007, fortunately. And Syria, of course, is the closest possible ally of, of Iran. And there has been evidence to suggest that there are closer relations on the nuclear level and on the ballistic level between Iran uh, and North Korea. But more importantly, the Iranians are taking close note of how the world reacts or fails to react to North Korea's flagrant violations of its nuclear deal. The North Korean nuclear deal is actually stricter than the Iranian nuclear deal. Uh, North Korea cannot, under its deal, enrich uranium for peaceful uh, energy purposes, but the Iranian deal can. Um, Iran was able to maintain, under its deal, its entire infrastructure uh, for Iranian enrichment, including its facilities, including potentially hundreds, 100,000 centrifuges, and those centrifuges can become more advanced centrifuges that are capable of enriching uranium faster and at a higher level. And so, if the Iranians note that the world re re fails to react to North Korea's violation, Iran, the Iranians will conclude that in eight or nine years, when its deal ends, then this entire infrastructure can then go back online, be plugged back in, and it can enrich uranium that is enough for maybe 100, perhaps even 200 nuclear weapons, and the world and the world may just sit and do nothing. Lift up your eyes and look around. All your children gather and come to you. The biblical prophecy is unfolding right before our very eyes. The people of Israel are returning to the promised land after 2,000 years of exile. But millions of Jews are still longing to come home. Anti-Semitism threatens many of the Jews. We must rescue them before the window of opportunity slams shut. Bless Israel by supporting Karen Hayasod United Israel Appeal, the leading official fundraising organization for the State of Israel. Together, we can fulfill the prophecy of the Bible. Let us bless Israel together. To donate and get information, call us at 1-800-505-1665 or visit our website at www.khisrael.org. Stay tuned for the ICEJ report from the International Christian Embassy, Jerusalem. Can you imagine waiting for 18 years to make plans for your future? Having dreams and aspirations inside of you, but you cannot plan your life because you are stuck between two worlds? This is the case for many Ethiopian Jews waiting to make Aliyah and return to their biblical homeland. I had the opportunity to meet a remarkable man named Hermias. Here is his story. Formerly Hermias Gebre, I am not a typo, the Gondar, the Ani Begil Shimon Esre, the Kaha Kumoshatim, Stavitim Varetim, Anakno Garim Kaha, Haim Satpo, Kashe, Misha Shoreoto, the Gamsh, Lemisha Gareta Haimazi, Kashe, the Islam with Akilapo, the Anakno Mister Rim, the Hakim, the Mashal Anipo Mahake, the Shimon Esrim Shan. Ani Rose Batid Lihiot. Rofe, the Aniaksha Bekita Yodalif, Anilo Mirpo, the Atemio Dimpo Kashala Nulahlit, Anakno Dim Iman Nahnu, Olkim Le Israel, Olo, the Kashala Nu Ledat, Aval Aniaksha Omer Bati, Dani Rose, Imani, Kanis Le Israel, Yas, Imani Ase, Talia, Ani Rose El Hiot Hayal Besava, the Gamli Hiot Rofe, La Zoreta, Am Israel, Kiani Hale, ma'am. I was able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people who were able to get a lot of people 
כרגע היחודים שהיו בהתחלה באתיופיה, הם לא כל כך היו יודעים מה קורה בישראל וכולנו היו חושבים הארץ הזאת יש לה חלה ודבש, אנחנו גם שרים את השיר הזה ועכשיו אנחנו רואים שגם זה אותו דבר, יכול להיות אנחנו לא נמצא חלה ודבש בארץ ישראל בכל מקום אבל אם זה המקום הקדוש ואם אנחנו גם עובדים יכול להיות שאנחנו מקבלים את הדברים וגם תאמינו לי, להיות, אם אנחנו נהיה עם המשפעה שלנו בארץ, נהיה שמחים. אם אנחנו נהיה עם המשפעה שלנו, נהיה שמח, וגם שהמקום הזה, השם נתן לנו, כדי שאנחנו נגור שם. ולזה אנחנו חושבים את על ירושלים כל הזמן. שאמרתי לכם, אני פה מחכה ל-80 עשרה שנה כדי ללכת לארץ ישראל. אנחנו יודעים שאחרי שאנחנו הולכים יש כל מיני עבודות לעשות אותן, אבל בגלל הארץ וגם העם, כי חזק, יכולים לנצח את זה, ואנחנו מחכים את זה. At the International Christian Embassy, we have decided to not only help Ethiopian Jews make Aliyah, but also to become established in Israel. You have the opportunity to show your love as a Christian and partner with the ICEJ. Sponsor an Ethiopian Jew to come home. Visit icej.org slash Ethiopia to partner with us today. That's all for this edition of Israel Now News. I'm Yochanan El Rom. And I'm Rebecca Rand reporting from our studio in Jerusalem. Please join us next week for all your Israel updates.